the Harris Center, making research work. What I do in anthropology is listening to stories. So I'm really interested in stories. Stories people tell, stories people hear, stories people share with each other. That's one of my passions. So I do that in my spare time and at school. Pilgrimage, opening the mind on the open road, sharing a journey of belief. I'm from Kokang, New Brunswick, which is a small fishing community in eastern New Brunswick. Um, there's about 20, uh, 2,000 people living there. I used to own a sailing school that, um, that became the largest of its kind in Canada, but that after five years, I failed miserably. So uh, I had to quit school for two years to pay back the business loans that I had created for myself. I've always been fascinated with travel. With travel comes this very, very intense feeling of doing something, of enriching yourself, of learning about other things that you can't, you can't well learn in your home environment. So I started looking at how belief and tourism melded. Pilgrimage is a very open topic. For instance, my supervisor in religious studies um, studies uh, Mickey Mouse and Disneyland as a pilgrimage, as a shrine, you know, to where parents bring their children as a way of, you know, marking a becoming, marking a very important experience in one's life. There's all kinds of other different pilgrimages. Some might say that going to the Forum to see the Habs is a pilgrimage in itself. Some might say that, some might even say that the morning coffee at Timmy's is a sort of pilgrimage. One of the first very important pilgrimages that I participated in was in fact the pilgrimage to Medjugorje. I went there as a Roman Catholic in search of uh, an idea, or maybe I was just going for curiosity, but I was going as a pilgrim, and I was the only person in the pilgrimage group without white hair. I was, I stuck, I stuck out like a sore thumb. Everybody there was just fantastic with me, fantastic with each other. I fell in love with the idea of the experience of pilgrimage. Through having lived it, I realized how enriching it was for me. I, and I realized how strong uh, the ties between our group has become. That's when I decided to make this my area of research. Why, why are people from Canada going to this place on the other side of the world to see nothing? Basically, a little village that is very normal in every way, shape, or form. Studying what motivates humans to do things in the context of pilgrimage is an incredibly revealing thing because people, for once in their lives, or for this specific moment in their year, they live fully. They allow themselves to be open to new things, to experience, you know, newness, and to betray their own, you know, I shouldn't and I wouldn't, you know. The 80-year-old people climb mountains barefoot. They'd never be allowed to do that back home. I just find it so gorgeous, you know, like the, that people want something so badly, you know, want to better themselves, want to understand life, want to know God better. I find the investment of people so beautiful that to me being there and able to capture it whether it be on film or on camera or in interviews or in stories is a terrific opportunity it's it's a privilege small steps big truths researching life in stories